ETFs are a great way to earn a consistent stream of income without having to spend hours of your own time researching companies. There's lots of really great ETFs in the Australian market and I'll be sharing some of the best ones with you and giving you a complete breakdown of what companies make up the ETF, their returns and of course a complete breakdown of the pros and cons of investing into ETFs and how to buy ETFs using an Australian brokerage platform called Stake. The first one on the list is the Vanguard Australian Shares. This ETF tracks some of the best performing dividend stocks in the Australian market. There's some rules that help to guide this ETF's performance. The first one being that one sector can't make up more than 40% of the ETF and any one allocation into a single company can't make up more than 10%. This is a great way to get a nice sustainable return without spending hours of your own time researching individual companies and also banking on the fact that a single company will always pay out a dividend can be quite challenging. Even the four major banks, NAB, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, Westpac and ANZ, couldn't pay out their dividend during the pandemic, whereas having your dividend coming from an ETF where there's multiple different companies making up that single investment, you get a lot more security that you're always going to be paid out that nice consistent dividend return. The top 10 holdings are made up of companies like BHP, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, West Farmers, Westpac Bank of Australia, and National Australia Bank. You can see that BHP Group and Commonwealth Bank make up about 10% of the whole ETF's holdings. Over the past five years, it's gone up 30%, meaning if you had invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $13,000. That return does not factor in the dividend yield of 4.8%. It's got a total of 72 companies held in the ETF, and it's got an expense ratio or a management fee of 0.25. Some of the main sectors are financials, consumer discretionaries and energy. Another great ETF investment is one offered by Tiger Brokers that lets you invest into Bitcoin ETFs. If you want to get access to a Bitcoin ETF, just download the Tiger Brokers app and search for them on the platform. There's lots of different providers available. This lets you get exposure to the crypto market without going through the learning curve of figuring out how to set up an account on a crypto exchange or how to use a crypto based wallet. The second option is the Australian Select High Dividend Yield Fund. This provides a quarterly dividend payment and again with this kind of ETF you get capital appreciation of the ETF's price and you can also make money from the consistent dividend payout. So your money can grow in two different ways. It's got a dividend yield of 5.1% and over the past five years, it's gone up 36%. Meaning if you had invested $10,000 five years ago, your investment would now be worth $13,600. It's got a management fee of 0.2% and it's made by the large financial company BlackRock, which is currently one of the biggest financial institutes in the world. So there's a lot of money backing this particular ETF giving it a lot more security. Some of the top 10 holdings include CSL, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and BHP. The main sectors are financials, healthcare and materials, financials making up over 34%. So it's spread out amongst lots of different sectors and there's a bit of crossover between the two ETFs so far on this list in terms of the top 10 holdings and the sectors that they invest into. The third ETF on this list is the ASX Dividend Opportunities ESG Screened ETF. This ETF invests into Australia's top 50 biggest dividend yielding companies. It again gives you a quarterly dividend payment and is owned by BlackRock. Some of the top 10 holdings include West Farmers, Commonwealth Bank of Australia and BHP Group. The main sectors are materials, financials and energy with materials making up about 30%. The top 10 holdings make up about 70% of this whole ETF and it's got a management fee of 0.23%. The actual number of holdings in the ETF isn't quite 50, it's just sitting at 48. It's got a management fee of 0.5% and a dividend yield of 3.87%. The fourth and final ETF on this list is the S&P ASX 200 High Dividend Yield ETF. This invests into 200 of the biggest Australian dividend yielding companies with some of the top 10 holdings including Rio Tinto, Westpac, Commonwealth Bank of Australia and BHP Group. The top 10 holdings include materials, energy and financials which makes up about 40% of the sectors in this ETF 
just on its own. But when it comes to investing in the Australian market, there's still a lot of other things to keep in mind. Like how does Stake compare to investing through an established bank like Commonwealth Bank or through another online brokerage platform like Webull? And also what about the benefits of investing into individual companies? If you want to see a complete guide on how to start investing in the Australian stock market, then make sure to check out this video on screen. Now that you're set up with a profile on Stake, I'll just be running you through how to buy shares of one of these ETFs using the Stake platform on my mobile phone. So once you head over to Stake, this is what the home screen looks like. So there's a search icon at the bottom of the page. Just click on that and then search in the particular ETF that you want to invest into. So I've got the iShares MSCI Australia Dividend ETF. So you can click on that or you can manually search it as well. And then it'll give you a bit of a price breakdown across different time points. So at the moment, it's one day. You can go three months, one year, or three years as well. And then it will give you a breakdown about the stock, a bit of a blurb, what the ETF is about, any news related to it. And then it has the buying options at the bottom. So just click on buy. And then I always go with market buy, which just means that you're buying the shares of this ETF at the current market price. So at the moment, it's $23 a share. So you're just buying it at that standard market cost. So you just click on the amount that you want to invest in. So let's say it was $100. Just type that in, click done. And then at the moment, I don't have that much money on my stake account. But you type that in and you go review buy. And that's all you have to do to buy shares of a company using the platform stake.